Hello and welcome to an all new episode of Men and Women Talk, the Mars Venus Show. I am one of your hosts, Kente, all the way live from Los Angeles, California. I am so happy to be here with you on this Monday night, uh, October 10th. Um, and uh, so sorry we're really late, some technical difficulties, but we are here and we're going to try to get this show in. Um, I'm here with my wonderful co-host, the one and only, the artiste, Rashim. How are you doing, Rashim? <laughs> hey, I'm good. How are you? All the way from Baltimore. Baltimore. That's because Baltimore is my second favorite city in the world. It really is. is. Right? It really is. I love Baltimore. That's what's up. So we're representing my two favorite places. So I'm, I'm very... Great East and West Coast unite. That's right. That's right. So today's topic is upgrading your sex game. And we have two wonderful panelists that's gonna help us navigate through this sexual web of intrigue. So let me start off by, of course, ladies first. We have the one, the only, Paige Diamond. How you doing, Paige? I am absolutely fabulous. How are you today? I am excellent, I'm excellent. Tonight. Yes, and I'm so happy that uh, you are here. And can you give us a little background on who you are and what you do and all that good stuff? Sure, absolutely. First, thank you for having me. I've been really anticipating the show, so I'm glad to finally be on. Um, a little bit about me. I am a sex coach, also a sex expert and author. I've been in the industry for nearly a decade. I specialize in helping you uh, get unstuck. And, and being unstuck, meaning that sometimes we get bored in the bedroom um, and we tend to throw away healthy relationships because of sex. So I help you kind of prevent that from happening and help you to unlock some passion and you know, really upgrade your sex life, but also infuse spirituality in your sex game too, because people tend to forget that that is pretty important. So uh, that's basically me in a nutshell. Uh, you know, I'm just ready to you know, spit some game. All right. You know? I'm glad that you're here and uh, you, you're coming in a little scratchy. So what we're going to do is we're going to have you come out and come back in and you should be. Sure. All, right. Yeah. all right. So joining us, thank God uh, that Dante's here. Uh, and we were supposed to have Taylor Dean on, but whatever reason, uh, he's a no show. And uh, Dante was such a nice guy to come in and pinch hit for the brother. How you doing, Dante? I'm doing great. How about yourself? I'm doing great myself. Um, give us a little background on yourself. Okay. Um, I am an entrepreneur. I've been an entrepreneur for three years. I specialize in marketing um, online and offline and e-commerce. I'm also a consultant for um, people um, in e-commerce. <clears throat> okay. And uh, you're based in the South? That's correct. In Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta, Georgia. All right. So, Paige, let's see. How do you sound now? All right. Mic check. One, two, one, two. Okay. It's a little, little scratchy. So, let's try it one more time. Okay. What I'm about to do is I'm just going to put my mic up and see if that helps. Give me a second. Yeah. And maybe whatever you do. I love Paige's hair color. Thank you. Isn't that, like, so cute and so fitting? I can't, I can't go back black. I, I can't. I, yeah, it looks gorgeous. <laughs> it looks so good on you. Thank you. That's that's your brand yeah. now. That's that your brand. Good. Oh yeah, like I can't I can't go with that. I got clients because my hair is red. Believe it or not, it's like when I saw you had red hair, I just knew you were like so cool. So I was like, okay. I was like, oh. mm -hmm. all right, cool. So yeah. I, I what am I actually? What am I actually do? Page the refresh button, and hopefully that will clear it up. So let's try that. All right, let me do that. All right, cool. Let's all right. So, um, all right. So while we're waiting for Paige, uh, I'm going to uh, go back to you, Rasheem, and once again, uh, remind people about your programs and what's coming up. So my name is Rasheem. I host a show called The Counter Narrative. It is every Saturday night at 930 p.m. Eastern Time. The next show that we'll have is Healing the Black Family from the Inside Out which will be followed by being brown and foreign. And then at the end of the month, uh, black women in the military. I also co-host a show called Hers, Mine and Yours, where we talk about all types of different topics, love, relationships, life, uh, with 
um, fantastic uh, co-host, Stephanie Spam. And again, that show is Hers, Mine, and Yours. And that airs every Thursday night at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time. The next show uh, that we have is somewhat similar to this topic. So if you actually like this topic on this show, you'll definitely want to check us out. Thursday night, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Hers, Mine, and Yours. And I believe we'll be doing it on the same on um, the Huzza platform. Steph, um, right, yeah, we'll be doing it on this very same platform, which is Huzza.io. You could check out my Facebook or her Facebook, and she'll be sharing the link to let you know exactly how you can uh, click to, to join, click to follow, um, come on so that you could ask questions live and we could. Um, answer your questions live and on the air and engage with not only us, but get, engage with whoever our guest speaker is. So that's kind of what's coming okay. up. Okay. And um, next week, uh, your your co-host with the co-most, uh, Steph, will be joining us as well as Danielle Boos. And we're going to have the all-female panel. So I, I got to get out that male uh, uh, survey this week so that we can um, definitely go on that. So let's see. Paige, let's see how do you sound now. All right, hopefully this is good. Okay, it's still a little scratchy. Yeah, that's so strange. Why is it so scratchy? That's so crazy. Okay. Well. You don't sound scratchy to you, though, do you? Hold up. Do you sound can scratchy you when you hear yourself? Hear you uh-uh. That's funny. She was, like, fine when, before we started uh, recording. You know, that's so funny. Let me just take That's the technology elves. All right, let's see how you sign out. You want to wear the headphones? Yeah. No, nah, yeah, you probably need the headphones. Um, you don't have a mic, do you? I do, but when I put my mic in, then I can't hear you. It's like some, some strangeness. Well, can we get can we get her audio from her phone? Uh, can she like call in through her phone and we? Yeah, yeah, video? let's do that. Um, yeah, okay. uh, we'll get her audio through her, the phone. So just mute your computer. Just okay, mute. cool. We'll get her audio through her phone. All right. I love technology. All right. So um, as we are uh, are waiting for doing that, um, of course, you can go to IndyRadio.org. That's I-N-D-Y Radio.org. And if you want to call in tonight, the number is 323-522-4601. Once again, the number is 323-522-4601. Hello? Hello? Yes. Is that better? Yes. Um, now... If you if you can uh, mute the mic on your computer. Uh, oh, I don't know. Can't say you were trying to do that too. It didn't come out so well. No, no, no. Uh, um, all right. Is that all right. Good now? There we go. Yes, we're good. That sounds good. All right, there'll be a little delay, but that'll be fine. All right. All right. So the topic, as I said, is upgrading your sex game. Uh, there's always a reason for why I come up with these topics, and one reason is. You know, a lot of people, um, they are not as open when it comes to their sex life or sexuality or, or you know, some of the issues they may have in the bedroom. And they're always looking for advice. And they are, and sometimes, especially if you're a dude, you know, there's really no one you can really talk to to say that you need help, right? Unless you get, you know, a life coach, you know, or, you know, your priest ain't going to help you, right? Uh, so you, you need someone to talk to. So, uh, so I felt like this would be a great topic to talk about tonight. All right. So let me start off by, um, going to our guest page and I want you to give, uh, <laughs> I want you to kind of give a background on what you do once again. And, um, how are some of the ways that you can, that you help people in your, 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 uh, business and such? Absolutely. Um, well, there's a big misconception that, that if you need a, a sex coach, the reason, the reason you need a sex coach is because you're stuck in bed. So, so everyone thinks, okay, okay well, I'm my bedroom is not in shambles. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm having, having good, good sex, so what do I need a coach for? for? But, but the thing about, about it is, is that coaching, coaching is for my brain, brain and what, what I do, do is all about 
elevation, elevation and upgrading. upgrading. It's, it's not, not about, about, you know, you don't know, know the basics, the basics I, can't I can't help you. Help you. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not the coach, coach for you, you, you don't have, have the basics. basics. What, what I, 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 I do, do is I go ahead and I take you from where you want to be, whether that be more experimentation, more intimacy, more spontaneity, finding time, how to have that balance, you know, posing sexual appetite, what how do you handle and maintain that, even, you know, getting in that old thing back, creating something new, but it's never about, oh God, my life sucks. And, and my partner, my partner doesn't know how to please me, me and, and therefore they need to be coached. That's not, not my, my area, area of, of expertise, expertise within rally, rally coaching. Uh, um, real, real quick, too. Uh, I want to make sure because I have you on mute on the computer. Uh, are you muted on your computer uh, page? Yep, I'm muted everywhere I can. Uh-uh. You still coming? So oh, I think she might have muted oh, us. Oh, you might have muted us. That's right. You can't. Yeah. Right, so from her end, she can't mute herself. Yeah, you, can actually, uh, you can mute yourself if you go into the... Let me go into the mixer. Right, right, and then uh -huh. mute yourself that way. I really appreciate some of what you were saying too, Paige, especially when you were, when you were talking about um, just making it, I guess, okay for people to go to like a sex coach and not feel like they're a failure or like they suck because everybody, you like, it's just a pick me up, right? It's not like seeing that you're lame or you're necessarily whack in bed, but sometimes you might have run out of ideas. And I think sometimes we, especially guys, might go to it with the idea of like, what you trying to say? <laughs> you know, like if their woman said something about them going to a sex coach, what you trying to say? I ain't putting it down. That could really, I feel like, impact the guy's ego even. Do you um, coach primarily women or do you co coach primarily couples? Or how does that work, uh, particularly with male when you're talking to them about upping their sex game? Um, um, still echoing because I did do my mute. No echo. Okay, good. So, I don't hear an echo. All right, so yeah, my most of the time is male, you know, um, people that are that are my clients, um, because of the fact a lot of it's a big misconception when it comes to how men view sex and how we look at each other when it comes to sex. Um, oftentimes. Men want women to be more aggressive and assertive in the bedroom, but they don't know how to go about mm. inspiring that from us women. Versus with women, we want to go there, but we are afraid of being judged. Or here are our partners looking at us saying, well, where you learned that from? And, you know, are you cheating on me? Because now all of a sudden you got all these ideas. You want to hang out the chandelier. You want to bring a pole in the bedroom. Like, who you been hanging around? <laughs> you know, so it's this big dynamic of everybody wants the same thing, but they don't know how to go about getting it. And so I find that men are more open because women are very reserved when it comes to talking about sex because of, you know, female sexuality being hugely suppressed in mainstream society. It's almost like you love it and you hate it at the same time. You know, you love it as long as you can capitalize on it and, and, it, and it it works for you. But then the same breath, don't, don't be too empowered sexually because then, you know, you got to kiss my baby with that mouth type thing. You know, so it's this weird <laughs> moron that we have with sexuality. And so, yeah, men are primarily my, are my clients. After that, then couples. Women are the, the last, believe it or not, of the three. You know, you know, uh, and something interesting too is um, you guys, you two ladies are are very open minded. But I just wonder though, are the vast majority of women really open minded about if their man is going to a sex coach? You know, like I just can't see too many women not looking at him kind of kind of funny. Am I wrong? Oh, they hide. No, they hide. They're from just from their women. I have a lot of male clients that don't. Their women don't know they have a sex coach. Um, <laughs> if I text that bad, like I'm texting for whatever their business is or something of that nature. So that way, if she's checking the phone, it has to be that whole thing because of the, I guess you could say the stereotype, I guess, so to speak, mm -hmm. when it comes to any type of self-help, whether that be therapy, whether that be coaching, you know, it's that whole thing. And, and so a lot of my male clients know they do not, you know, let their other half know that they're actually in coaching because of fear of 
the uh, misconception and possibly the judgment. So, damn, because think about it, women are pretty, I ain't gonna lie, we kind of harsh when it comes to men in the bedroom and, you know, they're like, oh, you need a coach? Hold on. You know, what's wrong <laughs> with you? You know, <laughs> I need a man, I don't need no coach. You know, that right. type of thing. And because once again, it's a very misunderstood area. It's a very misunderstood lane. People hear about life coaches all the time, but when it comes to sexuality and having a coach for that, it's kind of like, let, what? What let, do you mean? And, and I'm, I'm going to get into some background about you guys. But uh, I want to ask you this question. Does your coaching extend it to uh, in-game coaching? So, like, okay. if he's, like, about to or in the middle of, you don't coach then, do you? It's way before or after, right? Oh, yeah. Like, I'm not there in the trenches with you, like, on webcam. <laughs> like, okay, you know, make sure you, you hit over there in that A spot and, you know, turn over and flip. No, no, no. I'm not. Nah, that ain't what I do. You know what I mean? Well, I, but I do, my, one of my areas that I do specialize in is technique. So if, you know, there there are things that, you know, can be done to, you know, definitely take a position to another level or to, you know, maximize pleasure, absolutely, or how to last longer or, you know, how to, you know, uh, stay hard and, you know, things of that nature, absolutely. Give you techniques for days on that. But no, I'm not there with you uh, coaching. I, if, I, if they're local, we do field trips. Like, I've been to strip clubs with my clients and, you know, different things like that, but it depends on, you know, what they need, what the needs are for that, for that actual client. All right. So let, let's get into a, 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 a little bit of the background. Um, and I'm going to start off with you, uh, Dante. Uh, you know, when you were a young man and you became sexually active, right? Um was there anybody like in your life as far as older? I don't know if you have any brothers or something that gave you some game on uh, on women and sex and all of that kind of stuff. Did you have like a mentor? Yeah, I, yeah. My, my, my brother. Your who? My brother. Uh huh. So, what kind of advice did he give you about girls and sexing them up and all that stuff? <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. No, so so my brother, my brother, uh, my brother went with his. He has he has his girl, and he what he always used to do was he once he had his girlfriend, he made sure she had a sister, and we used to always go over there, you know. And then he would tell me he he would he would let he would tell me like, hey, look, you need to do this. Look and do this, you and like really like coach me on it, so it's kind of funny. Oh, like, so you got coaching at <laughs> a young age. Yeah, I mean, well, that's good. I mean, that's more than what most people get. Seriously, from you know what I hear is just most people just learn from porn. That's their teacher, you know. Like, okay, I looked at porn and saw they were doing and tried to emulate what they did on the pornos, and that's basically how I learned. And then later, may have had a partner that maybe walked me through and showed me how they would like to be pleased. But most of the time, it's porn. It's not. That. So that's not bad. I wonder what yeah, if you think about it, that's a scary concept learning uh, about sex through porn. <laughs> you know, that is a whole generation, <laughs> a whole generation of us that learned our first. And you're like, wait a minute, wait a minute, what's going on? Like, she doesn't like Ray. it when you do that. I, in the in the video, she loves it, you know, like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dante, I'm sure the the man that you are now, you probably feel a little bit more confident about, you know, your skills and what have you in terms of in the bedroom. At what point or what was it that happened? Like, what was the turning point for you where you just like, all right, I'm, you know, I'm pretty good at this. Or what was the point where you had you had been doing the same thing and then you what was the first time you tried something new? Mm. Oh, OK. Yeah. So. Um, it was just with, it was with, it was, it was with somebody actually, um, actually like, like not, well, not like, I would say love. That was pretty much that, that was that time, you know? And that was the time when I, like the whole sexual experience changed for me, um, at that point. And that was, believe it or not, that was in the, that was, um, when I was in the military. Like oh, wow. at that time. So, Yeah. What made that different? Was it did you did you perform differently uh, because you love her? And if so, what what made it like? What was your performance like, and how was it different 
when you love the woman as opposed to we both had the same sexual appetite that was one okay. that was one thing because usually you you it's kind of hard to if you got a, if you got a strong sexual appetite it's kind of hard to find somebody else that that's equal to you um because they not gonna want to do it then you gonna want to do it then you know you always gonna want to do it and then they like what the hell's going on with you you know so at that point it was mm-hmm. like okay well we can do this all day like we can do this two days every one we can do we just stay in for the weekend you know um type deal but it was it was a little bit more it was a little bit more than that because i was supposed to marry her uh I suppose yeah, me and her supposed to got married uh, before I went to the before I went to war. Um, but yeah, that was that was just it. That was the only thing that it was just the everything that we've been through together, you know. Uh, and it was all like just coming in, like all the stress, all the problems that we had, like in just like life, and we took you know like we saw those problems. We just took it out in the bedroom, you know, like. After that was a new day, you know. What I mean, it was like, oh yeah, you were stressed out. Don't worry about it. Tomorrow's a new day, so you know, like we can we can do it. Long, long as we got each other, we can we can relieve this stress. We good. I mean, I appreciate that because what I'm hearing from you too is that like it didn't like your development of intimacy didn't start in the bedroom. It was like the things you went through before, all of these other things, and then I'm also hearing from you like how therapeutic and soothing it was for right. you to to um you know what i mean be able to connect and release with another person right. in that way now now of course we're not all the same right we all have different bodies and different things that turn us on and um so i want to go to page about uh tailor making your sexual uh, experience for the whatever partner you're with and uh a way of um you know, getting to a point where, you know, you can provide the person you're with what they need, right? Because, you know, one girl is going to be different than another, you know, or for a woman's point of view, one man's going to be different. So um, what are some things to, to look for as far as, you know, tailor making it? Is it just having a conversation or is it just keeping your eyes and ears open? What? It's a combination, uh, honestly. Um, in my book, Do Get Over Yourself, um, that's one of the things that I talk about for the men, um, because men tend to, I think more than women, um, have a one size fits all mentality because so much ego is involved in performance. Uh, men assume that they're supposed to take the lead all the time in the bedroom. So therefore they tend to try to control the tone. Men are even knowing that they're doing that, but they control the tone. And so because they're like, you know, they're, they're, they want to believe that they are the most experienced party in the bedroom. They'll go ahead and they want to take her to where he wants to take her. She may not even want to go over there. You know, it may have worked for Tiffany, but Nicole don't like that. You know what I mean? So it's the conversation of, you know, we a lot of times what we do, we get caught up in a person. We, are, we like each other physically and we're like, damn, you know, you're sexy and this and the third. But you don't want to have that sex conversation. You want to be too forward. You don't want you want to be disrespectful. You don't want to come off as being, you know, easy or a whore or a dog or whatever you want to call it, right? So you don't have the conversation. Then you end up in bed with each other. And it's like, you know, where water. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like you're trying to it's like feeling around in the in the in the dark. Literally. Because even though you may have had sex before with somebody, you ain't had sex with this person before. You're like a virgin all over again when you have a new sex partner. So what I always advise is, you know, first things first is, you know, I tell them, um, ask them about, you know, what turns them on. Is what they hear turn them on? Some people are auditory, meaning that, you know, you can say certain things and then they can like, ooh, hold on, you know what I'm saying? Now their brain is working and it's starting to, you know, something's starting to flow a little bit. Or is it a, a way that someone can touch you? You know, could, you know, um, I had a guy who took my hand and made me just wet. You know, just some shit on the hand. So, what gets you, you know what I mean? Um, is it, you know, um, scent, you know, a certain smell, you know, does that really, you know, if a, person, a man smells good or a woman smells good, is that something that really, really can get you around to start to look at them in a certain way? What, what is it that gets you? Everyone can say, oh, it's a combination of things, but everyone has a primary. It's always going to be one thing that's going to override everything else. Of course, it's always going to be a mix. So you want to know, you know, what arouses you also want to know what type of lover they are. Are they passive? 
Are they dominant or are they kind of in the middle, meaning that they can switch? That's really important because if you got two passive lovers together, y'all ain't gonna get shit done. If you got two dominant lovers together, it's gonna be a fight to get something done. You know what I mean? Because everybody wants to be the first to assert themselves. So where where, where do we fit in this? You know, because at the end of the day, when we're talking about sex, it's an energy exchange. You know, you're exchanging energy with a person. And the worst thing to have is wanting to have sex with someone, but it would be totally off. It's like a hit or miss. That's a horrible feeling because you want to connect with that person, but you're just not sure how to do it. Um, then I also explain that, you know, you also need to understand that how you actually, how can I work it? We have to call pay attention in the same book where people tend to think that you're supposed to pay all pay attention to your partner. I don't advise that. People think that's crazy. But think about this, right? If you're focusing all your brain power on your partner, you're not even able to enjoy the sensation, the feeling, you know, everything that is going on that makes it beautiful and makes it, makes it pleasurable. You're not because you're so in your head watching and trying to figure out this and that. You know what I mean? Yes, be mindful, of course, of your partner's you know, how they, their body responds when you put them in a certain position or if you, you know, uh, kiss them a certain way or, you know, if a fine curls up with have you have to be mindful of that. That should not be your focal point. Because then what you're doing is you're, you're making it like work. You're not enjoying sex. You're not connecting. You're so caught up in the big O that you miss everything else. And orgasm does not mean satisfaction. People tend to get that confused. Oh, if they came, they're satisfied. That, they're, they're not necessarily on the same plane, but there's, different, there's layers to satisfaction. So yeah, you can be physically satisfied, but what about everything else? You know, so um, that, hope I gave you a little bit of a dynamic, a little mix <laughs> on that, but you know, you need to do the conversation, but you also have to be mindful of your own body, how you receive stimulation, as well as how your partner reacts when you do certain things. You cannot be just totally focused on the nut. You focus only on the nut, you'll miss opportunities to really, really connect and really, really have a more beautiful experience with that person because you're so caught up in just the physical manifestation of, of having what people think is satisfaction. You, you know what's always strange to me is sometimes, and maybe Dante knows these guys, the ones that they have their woman, you know, maybe their baby's mother, their, their uh, wife, and then they have their woman on the side. So yes. the mother, the baby's mother, the wife, you know, that you know, that's we're just gonna do, you know, regular, just you know, the yeah. basic you know stuff. But the real fun comes from that girl on the side. That's the one that they really, you know, experiment and do all the wild, crazy stuff. And it, a lot of times it's not because the baby's mother or the wife or whatever isn't down. It's just that, you know, that, that thing, that old adage about she kisses, she kisses uh, my kids with their mouth, you know, and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> and I always <laughs> thought that, I always think that was kind of weird that, um, you know, that they kind of put their, that woman in the box and they're missing opportunities to share that kind of um, sex, uh, you know, sexual experiences with their actual, their, their woman. So um, what do you say to like guys, that do that kind of stuff, you know, where, where they do that. And, um, and if you're a woman and you are the wife or whatever, how do you know that you're being put in that box? Is there some signs or anything that you can see? Can I say first? Question for you first, Dante. No, that was for you. No, it's for, it's for you, but I'm going to relate it to him. Right. I'm going to relate it to him. Oh, for me first? I thought you said Dante at first. You said no, no, I said, I, said, I said Dante <laughs> probably knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, that was the right. Uh, okay. was the well, yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, I actually, uh, my best friend is a guy, so we have these conversations all the time. And um, I've actually experienced this. Not into the extent of, okay, well, I am... The wifey, and then they have somebody on the side of all this wild and crazy stuff that with it was more like your wifey, your comfort, your home. And I, I don't want to just jump up and down and pound you like some hole in the street because I love you. You know what I mean? Right, right. That. And it was like, but why can't we have both? Why, you know, why is it because we're in love now that that animalistic, primal, passionate stuff that really can really, you know, really bring a spark to the bedroom go away? 
And, you know, what I find is that oftentimes with, with women, when women fall in love with a man, they tend to open themselves up and they're actually a little, they're a lot more freer in the bedroom. So therefore they're a, they're willing to go to those places that men would think that they probably wouldn't because they are, you know, the wife or the girlfriend or what have you. And then what happens on the reverse side is men, they compartmentalize women and say, okay, well, only hoes do this. My girl, my wife, my, you know, everything. No, you don't do that with her. Mm -hmm. And not realizing that she's really willing to be everything for you, but, you know, it's, it's this whole, you know, like I said, it's, it's just not understanding that, you know, sex is fluid, you know, and it, it, it's not a one size fits all. And, you know, if you're, if you really have great communication base and you're really able to just really be yourself, that's what I say. You can't have, you can't have good sex with your partner and you're holding back. And it means that you're not actually being, you're not able to really be yourself with your partner. That's the most naked, vulnerable area of your being. If you can't just completely cut loose and be yourself in that area, then it means that you're wearing masks also outside of the bed. And so, yeah, it's a really, really common thing. Um, but it's a, it's also, um, it just kind of really boils down to, you know, um, having the conversation and, and also women being more assertive, you know, and, and, and not being so worried about judgment. You know, um, oftentimes you know, we're so worried about what other people think about us. This is our, this is your man. You know what I mean? Right. And, and this is supposed to be a safe place for you. You should be able to let go and, and really, really experiment and explore and enjoy each other. But, they, but, they, but you have to be able to, you know, lead by example. Just make us feel desirable. It's like I don't even want to have sex no more. And it's like okay, well, um, what used to make you feel desirable? Before him, screw him. What about you? Because you know, sexy is in here. You know, what I mean, desirable is you know, it's all in how you feel in your body. And you can't. You, sometimes people want that thing externally, but they don't. They don't have it internally. So it, it's a combination of things. But um, yeah, it's it's by case. But yeah, it's very very normal because the stereotype. You know, good girls don't do this, and only bad girls do this. So. The process. So one of the things I'm hearing you say too, Paige, is there's a lot of misconceptions and a lot of head work that's going on. It's kind of really re keeping us back. Like we're in our own way in terms of upgrading our sex game in another way, whether it's like the whole thing about good girls or bad girls, or um, if I respect you, then I'm not going to um, have sex with you in, in this particular way. So I'm interested in hearing a few more of those things that hold us back, but even more than that, I'm interested into what type of work can people do to overcome and sort of re-educate themselves about sex? Well, to get rid of some start. of that head talk. I'm sorry, you were still talking about your redundancy. No, I was just saying to get rid of some of that head talk. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, the first thing is this, okay? You know, and let's just be a thousand percent funky. You know, what did, what did we really learn in sex ed class? Only to avoid sex, right? <laughs> and they showed you blue waffle and showed you all these just horrible, morbid things that can happen to you. You have to, right. to even have sex. So, you know, it's kind of scaring right. us half to death <laughs> about sex. But then also, um, then you had, you know, think about puberty, right? When you're coming, you're starting to develop and your body's starting to change and how children don't understand what that is. So then you have these, you know, you have uh, women, I have a, a client that will not allow a partner to give her oral sex because she has a fear of him saying something about her natural sex. Not, she's like, not that it smells bad or anything, but I remember in high school, they used to call this girl fish. And I don't ever want to be, nobody could ever say I'm fish. Things like that, way back in like junior high, you know what I'm saying? She's still carrying this in the 30s. And it's causing body shame. It's causing shame of an, of the anatomy. Um, some people don't even lotion their asses and their penises in their mom's pews because they just feel like it's just only a sexual area. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like, if they, they look at your the anatomy of both areas as just something that has to do with sex. It's, otherwise, you don't have to look at your vagina and check it and make sure it looks right and healthy. You don't have to, you know, check your test 
physical to make sure that, you know, everything is in order. None of that stuff because you only think that it's all about sex. And so we have to understand first what sex is for us and as an individual. Is it a way to connect? Is it just a stretch reliever? Is it, um, you know, a means to an end? Do, you know, um, on what pretenses do you have sex? Um, at the end of the day, we all have sex for three reasons, which is recreation, procreation, as well as expectation. Expectation is big because a lot of people have sex because they think that's what they're supposed to do in a relationship. They may not even really be feeling it or wanting to do it, but, you know, you hear all this, which you won't do somebody else's real stuff, floating around all the time, and you have these people that are doing things sexually that are very uncomfortable for them and very foreign and alien to who they really are in order to appease a mate, rather than just being true to themselves and their own truth. The problem is, is a lot of people don't know what their truth is sexual. So that would be the first thing. What is sex to you? You know, why do you like having sex? Where do you like having sex? When do you like having sex, you know? And, you know, how do you like having sex? Do you like it slow? Do you like it fast? Are you a person that likes to, you like it to be very dark? Dark meaning passionate, aggressive, rough, or very light, which would be like, you know, more romantic, kissing and caressing and things of that nature. You have to know this for yourself. Nobody else can teach you this. This is something that you would have to do on your own because if you don't know it, how can you tell someone else or guide somebody else in the bedroom to give you the pleasure that you need, we tend to pass off pleasure onto our partner and say, oh, it's your job to make me satisfied. That has nothing to do with satisfaction. It's all on you. And if you don't make me come or you don't make me feel good, then you suck. Then you probably want to damn suck because you ain't giving no damn guidance because this, you know, you're a total different person from who they've been with in the past. Yeah. You know, so um, that's a, that's, that's a roadblock. Um, also, um, I always like to say Having sex on autopilot. When you have sex on autopilot, what you're doing is you're going through the motions and you're not taking charge of your satisfaction, of your pleasure. You're just allowing whatever happens to happen. It's almost like, you know, you're uh, passively, you're like window shopping. <laughs> you're not buying shit. You know, you're just there. You know, just, just coasting along. And But then you wonder why you're unfamiliar. You know, you, you have to have a voice. In the bedroom, and the voice does not have to be mean, it does not have to be judgmental, it does not have to be condescending. There is a way to communicate sexually with someone without tearing them down, which is something that I coach more than anything because the main problem we have, like I said before, is not that we don't want the same things, we just don't know how to go about getting I'm, I'm curious to, uh, to find out from uh, Dante, have you ever been in a situation where it was a woman that you like, not, not some kind of jump off type situation, but she wasn't quite getting it for you and you wanted to relay that to her that you wanted more or whatever. Have you ever been in that situation? Yes, I have been in that situation. Uh oh, sorry about that. Hold on, hold on. Uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Don. Yes, I have been in that situation before. As I, I, I to me, to me, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, you're good. My bad. That was my fault. I'm echoing. Okay. I'm echoing. Okay. Right. Am I echoing? Am I echoing? Uh, yeah. no. No, no, not at all. Yeah. So, yeah, I have been in a situation before. Um, and it's kind of hard to relate it um, to some to, to the other woman. I feel. Like, no, go ahead. I'm sorry. No. What, what, what question were you going to ask? I was just going to say, yeah, because, you know, the, the fear maybe for some is that, uh, you know, she's going to use that to uh, to put you on the bench, <laughs> you know, if you will. Or, you know, uh, oh, you don't like what I'm doing, then, uh, you know, then you need to go find someone who does or something to yeah. that effect. Also, you put in, you put in her mind, you put in her mind, too, but um, if, if she's not getting it for you, you're going to get find out who's going to get it for you, you know, and that's always going to be in her mind, you know, so you don't want to, you don't want to say, well, listen, baby, look, 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 what you're doing is good, but if you would do this, you know, or you would say this to me at this time, you know, something like that, uh, that would be all right, but you, you say, if you, to me, if I, I, I said that, I, I, I said that jokingly, right, and it, 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 had, it took like a serious turn, like, I had to 
like baby no i was just playing around you, you good whatever but you really was <laughs> so, like cause, cause we do play we act we'll play and you know you know wrestling and stuff like that and, and, you know you, you try to give little hints and stuff about it but yeah if it takes a turn for the worst like you in the doghouse for a long long time mm-hmm. yeah. I, i've been in the doghouse yeah so I'll, so to that Oh, go ahead. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's pretty much it. So at that point, I'm curious, Paige, what do you say to to men who want to um, advocate for their sexual needs without pissing off their woman in a way that is going to be encouraging, affirming to her, um, and not get her in a situation where she wants to play pussy politics because her feelings are hurt? Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> This, this is the thing when it comes to guys. Um, actually, this is actually in my, in my female version. Uh, girl, get over yourself. The problem is this. A lot of us are so, we're, this is like in regular life, right? Everyday life, we can tell you quicker what we don't like versus what we do like. It's just way easier to do that. That's just human nature, how we're wired. Just think about what we don't want, or, you know, and, and what we don't like. But in the bedroom, that's how I'm productive because what happens is almost like asking somebody, you know, why when you suck on my clitoris, you shake your head like this? That's going to make you feel good. Like, you know, you're going to be like, well, damn, okay, because you're going to get the symptom, right? Oh, well, that's just what I thought, you know, that's what I do or that's my move or whatever the case may be. You're not going to be solution oriented. You're going to be too busy defending yourself in what it is that you do. So what you have to do um, one of the tips that I give is this. You start with, it's a, you know, the compliment challenge. Start off with the compliment, you know. I love when you, you know, pull my hair. That, that shit drives me crazy. But, you know, what will really just make me kind of walls if you were to, where you, you were to, let's say, you know, bite on my ear, you know, while you're doing it or whatever the case may be. You compliment, tell them what's going right first, and then you guide them to how to elevate. You know what, this will take me to another level. You just, just do this one little thing. You'll be more prone to take that that advice and that guidance because they're not tearing you down in the process of trying to tell you, I like this as well, or do this for me. You know, versus, okay, well, you know what? You know, that head was extremely dry, and um, <laughs> I'm going to need you to get some Jolly Ranchers or something and put those salivary glands, you know. Yeah. Just <laughs> <laughs> like that would not be good. <laughs> Oh, man. Not you know what I'm saying? So you just have to understand that, you know, we all have egos. We all have pride. Um, I do believe that ego has no place in the bedroom. If you have, you know, come with your ego in the bedroom, then you already lost. You know, because mm. you're not in it for the team, you in it for you. So ego definitely does not have a place in the bedroom. But at the same time, though, you don't want to hurt feelings in the pursuit of your pleasure. That is at this pace, it, it, it defeats the purpose. You know, because that, cause that totally sabotages the energy exchange because then your energy goes from a positive place to a negative place. Now you're changing negative energy. I like I call it angry sex, which I think is bullshit and toxic. But we'll do that another time. <laughs> how do you, um, like, how do you take in, in instruction for, like, if a woman is saying, you know what, babe, when you, when you do, you know, like, kind of what Paige was saying, when you pull my hair, that feels like so fantastic. And when you, I don't know, nibble on my ear, that that is good. But what would make that even better is if you kind of bit my ear a little bit or just whisper something in my ear. Like, how do you feel like you would take that as a guy? Could you receive that? Yeah, can't say. Right, are you? Yeah, I can receive it. Uh, I would like to receive it. That's a- Oh, men don't okay. think women think men don't want to know how to please us, they actually do. But we <coughs> we kind of to deliver the information, and likewise, women want to please their, their partners too. But we don't want to feel like we're not enough in the process mm-hmm. of pleasing our partners, and that's really what it boils down to, right. you know, right? Saying it in the right way and saying it from, from your heart, not from your ego. Yeah, I feel the same way. I, you know, I, I wouldn't mind a woman telling me it, what she wants. I mean, shit, shit, it's, it's nothing wrong with that at all. Yeah, it's good. It's, what if she's telling you in the process? Is that okay? During sex, yeah, I, I, I would like that better. 
Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he'd be like, uh, uh, I'm with it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's get a nibble and let's get a bite, you know. Right. <laughs> no better time than now. Right? Yeah, hold it up. Okay. Yeah. So. But so, so some men would appreciate a drill sergeant, for instance. You know what I mean? It doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing. You know, it's all about, you know, really. You know, that's where sexual compatibility comes in, you know, and, and being able to be who you are naturally. Because I don't think you should ever dim your light sexually and, and not be who you are. As long as you're not, you know, as long as that the intention is not to be demeaning or emasculating or to be disrespectful. You know what I mean? And your partner knows you, then you being a drill sergeant in the bedroom would not have an effect on him in a negative way. And, and don't relate what you want to uh, a previous lover, too. Don't be like, you know. When my ex Carol used to do <laughs> horrible, don't do that at all. That's like the biggest thing. Yeah. And women don't be like, yeah. When uh, my ex Bob used to, you know. Don't. Well, you go find Bob. Baby. <laughs> <laughs> I was sitting around. Wait, whoa, whoa, wait, wait, wait! You did that for me. What do you mean? You know, you know, another thing too is when you when a woman says she wants you to do something. And you're like, don't say like, well, I, I tried it before and I didn't like it. Because uh, a lot of times they read that into, they read it as, oh, you did it with this other one. Oh, you won't do it with me? Like that kind of thing. So uh, that, that'll get you, Bravo, that will get you Bravo, effed up. You know. Why do kids they sound like he had a traumatic ex experience? <laughs> I, I, have a, I, have a, I have a severe problem with telling the truth a lot. And uh, I've learned to, you know, lie more. So uh, I'm much better at lying. Oh, Lord. Yeah, so, lie. yeah, the truth will not set you free. The truth will get you locked up. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> you got you to selectively tell the truth. And I think there's good lying. And I think there's bad lying. You know. What? Oh, this is interesting. Okay. There is good lying. I believe that too. Yeah, because, you know, bad lying is... You know, uh, I don't have a warrant, and uh, I'm not currently wanted from the police. Po po <laughs> that's bad lying. Uh, hey, you go. Uh, hey, Edgy, that's bad lying. Uh, you know, good lying is. Uh, you know, she asks you, "Is she the best? Uh, is she is she the best you ever had?" And you go, "You know what? Um, you're you're like you know you're great. You're in the top. You're number three. <laughs> That means you're in the top five, baby. That just means that just means don't overshare. <laughs> right. I got sex with a lot of women. You're in the top five, bro. So, Out of a hundred, girl. That's a, that's yeah, a that's actually girl. technically that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Right. That's pretty awesome. You know, but you know, women never take. They never look at the good in what you're saying. Like, Listen, this is a carnival. You'll get the big bear. Maybe you. Right. <laughs> I just want to get a small side. I agree with Steph, though. I don't think that I wouldn't want to ask that. Not because I wouldn't want to know, but I feel like that's that's pressure to say, "Am I like your best?" I feel like when I'm your best, you're gonna tell me without me asking you if I'm your best. Yeah, because that's like pre Like, am I now? Now I feel like it's a. It makes sense for me to ask if you like something, if something is pleasing or pleasurable to you. But me asking against your previous uh, yeah, don't, women, I think don't, it's a setup question. Yeah, don't ask for the ranking. Yeah, because you may not. Yeah, see, I'm asked. Cause see, I'm 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 real like I'm very competitive sexually. Yeah, I'm competitive sexually. My goal is to make sure that you're looking cross-eyed and like, you know, what I'm saying when it's over, like I I'm trying to go there. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, I want to know. You know what I mean. So they give me something to strive what, to. Okay, really? well let me find let me find something that you have never had before. Let me find another way to you know to take you to another place that you haven't been before. That's how I look at it. I want see. I think that you can have the truth, right? But it's all about your perception of the truth. I wouldn't. I wouldn't take it personally. Like, okay, well, dang, you man, my, my my vagina trash and my head just wet. I wouldn't go all the way over there because I know it ain't. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, what, okay, well, what if maybe they would call some like you know some old you know Martian type you know paranormal activity type head. I don't know, but let me <laughs> go ahead and see what I can get. <laughs> what, what if his answer? 
What if you ask him, are you the best? And he says, okay, you're not the best, but you're on my Mount Rushmore of sex partners. You are in the top, like, four. And that's pretty good, though, right? That, that's great, but I try to be number one. So that's just motivation. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you ain't gonna, I can't be denied. We, we gonna figure this out. Like, you know what I'm saying? I mean, and you know, that goes to say this, right? Um, we tend to give our partners foreplay the way that we want foreplay given to us. Mm-hmm. Not realizing that you have to tweak your foreplay to your partner. It ain't about you because you're two different people. Um, I gave a, I even, I even go there, you know, with a, a, a private, a personal example. Um, I am a flirtation, mental, set, you gotta set me up mentally and text me all kind of nasty stuff and all that. So when I get there, I'm just ready. That's who I am. That's my foreplay. That doesn't happen, and you just feel like you're just gonna kiss on me and, and just go down there and you know flirt, flirt, whatever. I know that's just that's that's not that's uh, yeah. Of course we're gonna get aroused because who doesn't get aroused from oral sex? But that doesn't mean I don't feel that there was any extra effort put in. You know what I'm saying? So it would not get me as ready as I could. Now, would I be ready? Yes, I would be ready, but not as ready as I could be. Versus, I've tried to do the same thing with my partner. And it's like, okay, you know what I'm saying? He's not a verbal person. It's not, that's not something that he's into. You know, I've tried, you know, sensation play, blindfolds and all that stuff and dirty darts and sensual wax massage. He went to sleep. Now relax him. I'm trying to turn you on and you said I relax you? So what I have to do? I have to wrestle with him, tussle with him, rough, fun play that arouses him. So you have to find, my, the point is you have to find what works for your partner. Even though it may not necessarily be your your damn, you still are in this with another person. You know what I mean? There's more than one way to 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 you know, arouse someone. Just because it doesn't mm-hmm. work that way for you doesn't mean that it's off the table. And mm-hmm. I think a lot of people don't realize that. We think that, especially with television and media, we only see foreplay done a certain way, and we think that that's just the only way that is done when there's a, a wide spectrum of what can be aroused with somebody. Now, hey, I, Black Love. I, now I want to I want to say something. Uh, Rasheem is going to step off, and we we have about another ten minutes. So, um, but I want to thank Rasheem, and we'll be back, and we'll uh, hope we'll be ready to go on time. Uh, thank you, Paige. You have been like I, I'm going to definitely be watching this replay. You're fantastic. You're yeah. phenomenal. Uh, I love what you're giving to people inside and out. Like I feel like you, you're you're taking a very holistic approach. I'm definitely going to watch the replay and see also what Angie um, brings to it, because I know she's going to bring something fantastic as well. And Dante, thank you for stepping in the way that you have, um, like doing a last minute audible. You the bruh. So I will see y'all later and keep the conversation going. Bye. Bye. Bye.